Good morning and welcome to our worship for the 2020 Convention of the Diocese of Western Massachusetts. Our service this morning will be morning prayer. I suspect most of us got some experience with remote morning prayer earlier this year, so you probably can figure out what to do. You can download the service sheet on the convention website or you can follow along with the service at the bottom of the screen. Throughout the service, I would invite you to join in saying the parts of the service that are marked in bold. Now, before we begin our prayers, let us take a moment to gather ourselves and center ourselves. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 75 and Psalm 76. Please respond by whole verse. We will give you thanks, O God. We will give you thanks, calling upon your name and declaring all your wonderful deeds. I will appoint a time, says God. I will judge with equity. Though the earth and all its inhabitants are quaking, I will make its pillars fast. I will say to the boasters, boast no more. And to the wicked, do not toss your horns. Do not toss your horns so high, nor speak with a proud neck. For judgment is neither from the east nor from the west, nor yet from the wilderness or the mountains. It is God who judges. He puts down one and lifts up another. For in the Lord's hand there is a cup, full of spiced and foaming wine, which he pours out. And all the wicked of the earth shall drink and drain the dregs. But I will rejoice forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. He shall break off all the horns of the wicked, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted.
In Judah is God known. His name is great in Israel. At Salem is his tabernacle, and his dwelling is in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of battle. How glorious you are, more splendid than the everlasting mountains. The strong of heart have been despoiled. They sink into sleep. None of their warriors can lift a hand. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both horse and rider lie stunned. What terror you inspire. Who can stand before you when you are angry? From heaven you pronounce judgment. The earth was afraid and was still. When God rose up to judgment and to save all the opposed oppressed on the earth. Truly wrathful Edom will give you thanks, and the remnants of Hamath will keep your feasts. Make a vow to the Lord your God and keep it. Let all around him bring gifts to him who is worthy to be feared. He breaks the spirit of princes and strikes terror in the kings of the earth. La primera lectura del libro de Eclesiástico. Te daré gracias, Rey y Señor. Te alabaré, mi Dios y Salvador. A tu nombre quiero dar gracias, porque has sido mi protector y mi ayuda, porque me has librado de la perdición, de las calumnias de una lengua traicionera y de unos labios que traman mentiras. Fuiste mi apoyo frente a quienes me acercaban, y por tu inmensa compasión y tu nombre, me libraste de las dentelladas de mis devoradores, de los que pretendían acabar con mi vida, de tantas tribulaciones como he padecido, de las llamas asfixiantes que me rodeaban, de un fuego que yo no había encendido, de ser tragado por el profundo abismo, de la lengua impura y la palabra mentirosa, y de las flechas de una lengua malvada. Estaba yo al borde mismo de la muerte, y mi vida tocaba ya lo más hondo del abismo. Me cercaban por doquier, y nadie me auxiliaba. Busqué a alguien que me socorriera, y no lo había. Entonces me acordé, Señor, de tu misericordia y de los favores que has hecho desde siempre de que libras a quienes ponen su confianza en ti y los salva de las garras enemigas. Elevé desde la tierra mi súplica y solicité ser librado de la muerte. Invoqué al Señor, tú eres mi Padre, no me abandones en los días de angustia, cuando indefenso me acosan los prepotentes. Alabaré incansablemente tu nombre y entonaré himnos de acción de gracias. Mi súplica fue entonces atendida, pues me salvaste de caer en la ruina y me arrancaste de una difícil situación. Por eso te daré gracias y te alabaré. Bendeciré el nombre del Señor. Palabra del Señor.
Let us pray together the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. One of the most important and solemn tasks we have at Convention is to remember and pray for those members of our diocesan family who have died this last year. This task has a special heavy weight for us this year. So let us pray for those who have entered into their rest. As much as we would all like to be worshiping together in person, we know that that's just not possible at this time. 
So let us ask for God's grace and God's blessing on our churches and our communities as we continue to live through this pandemic. Let us bow the knee of our hearts and pray to our God, the God of grace. We pray today for your church, for all churches and congregations who are unable to meet together at this time, for all who are meeting to pray together on behalf of those who cannot, that we may all hold on to your hope in a time of fear, show your compassion in a troubled world, and be your kingdom here on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your children around the world, for all nations struggling with the outbreak of deadly disease, for the leaders who bear the heavy weight of authority and government, that we may have the courage to do what we must to keep each other safe and healthy, to hold on to a vision of the common good for all your children, and to face the days ahead in grace and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who will lead us through this time of crisis, for wisdom and insight for specialists and experts, for those working to ensure that everyone can receive the treatment they need, that they receive the gift of patience, have all the tools they need to do their work, and the courage to speak in truth and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nada de turbe, nada de spante, chiara Dios tiene, nada de falta, nada de turbe, nada de spante, solo Dios. We pray for all who have been called to the holy vocation of medicine and those who care for the sick, for doctors, nurses, and all medical staff, for first responders and technicians, for all who put their own lives at risk to help others, that they may trust in the gifts they've been given and the talents they have cultivated, that they may be kept safe, and that all times they might know your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our communities at this time, for all whose work puts them at risk, for all who have lost their jobs, for all who struggle to find food, for those held captive by loneliness and grief, for those who are homeless, for all whose homes are places of fear and not safety, that a spirit of generosity and kindness may move among us that we may better understand and care for our neighbors and friends. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick, for those diagnosed with COVID-19, for all those awaiting tests, for all who are under quarantine, that they know your presence when they feel alone, that they know your hope together with their fear, and they know the power of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nada de turbe, nada te sponte, chiara Dios tiene, nada le falta, nada de turbe, nada Desponte, solo Dios basta. We pray for those who have died, for all victims of COVID-19, for those who were unable to receive the care they needed, for those who died with only angels walking with them, and for the families who grieved from afar, that they may enter into the rest you have prepared for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We repent of the sins into which we fall, 
of the pride that leads us to believe that we will be spared, of the greed that leads us to think only of ourselves, of the despair that comes from loneliness and fear, that we might embrace your forgiveness and mercy, find new ways to care for one another, and shine with the light of Christ's resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even at this time, holy God, we give you thanks for the good things in our lives for the wonderful gifts of the healthcare professionals working today, for the skill and diligence of those working to expand testing and create a vaccine, for the goodness of our neighbors and friends, for the sacrifices of all who work for the common good, that we may remember that hope springs from fear, that faith grows from the ground of uncertainty and doubt, and that we may hold fast to the truth that your love is stronger than death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, let us pray for this convention and for our work here today. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with those who take counsel in the Diocese of Western Massachusetts for the renewal and mission of your church. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us to perceive what is right. Grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, your way of love is the way of life. Thank you for entrusting us, your church, with doing your work in the world. Help us to remember that your mission continues wherever we find ourselves. And give us the grace to bring your forgiveness, compassion, and love to all whom we meet, so that we may go joyfully where you send us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Truly, God's mission continues in this diocese. New ministries are emerging and new things are happening. I am very pleased to bring in Bishop Fisher and the new Lawrence House interns, who will be dedicating this year to Jesus and Jesus' mission in the world. Bishop Fisher, colleagues in ministry, I am grateful for the opportunity to present to you this year's Lawrence House Service Corps interns. Lawrence House is a ministry sponsored by All Saints Church in South Hadley, which brings together young adults for a year living in intentional Christian community, serving full-time in social justice ministry throughout the diocese, and engaged in ministry discernment and faith formation. This year, we have welcomed an amazing crew, Jonah Branley, who comes from Kansas and is serving as a conference assistant at the Genesis Spiritual Life Center in Westfield. Susanna Hersey, who comes from Haiti via Illinois and Arizona and serves as Protestant chaplain at Mount Holyoke College. Lauren Kopf, who comes from Southern New Jersey and Lucy Lytle, who comes from Northern Virginia, both of whom are serving inner city children and youth by leading remote learning classrooms at the Boys and Girls Club in Holyoke. And Jess Lee, who comes from Florida via Ohio and Arizona who is serving as program minister at Church of the Atonement in Westfield. I would also like to introduce Jack Essing, who serves as assistant director and program associate for Lawrence House. Jack is a two-year Lawrence House alum, a graduate of Mount Holyoke College, a candidate for ordination to the diaconate in this diocese, and inspires me daily. Jack, if you would please join me, we will present our interns.
Bishop Fisher, on behalf of the Congregation of All Saints Church in South Hadley, I present Jonah Brandley, Susanna Hersey, Lauren Kopf, Jess Lee, and Lucy Lytle to be commissioned as the 2020-2021 community of the Lawrence House Service Corps. Have these young people been chosen by members of the congregation to come together in intentional community, to live by a rule of life, sharing meals, chores, and prayer, to become part of the parish and diocesan community, to live simply, and to serve the surrounding area in the name of Jesus. They have. Do you commit yourselves to carry out the responsibilities of the community to which you have joined? I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. Do you reaffirm your commitment to follow Christ and to serve others in his name? I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. For our convocation, our, who's gathered here today, a couple hundred people watching this, I say to you, we invite you to do all in your power to support these leaders with your prayers, your love for them in day-to-day -day life of this diocese, your honest yet gracious communication with them, and your willingness to help them carry out Christ's ministry in this place. So before I commission you, I just uh, want to offer a word of, of gratitude. You know, it's a uh, the great vision of Tanya Wallace to come up with Lawrence House probably six, seven years ago. And, and um, not only was it a vision, but it became a reality. And Lawrence House has had a big impact on all saints and has had a big impact on our diocese. Um, you know, in the past, I think I talked about this as kind of a school for leaders, that it teaches you to be a leader. But the fact is that you're leaders right now. You really are. You're, you're, you're really leading the spirit in, in our diocese. So thank you for the the energy and the vitality and the depth of spirit that you bring to us. And I want to thank Jack. I want to thank her for her leadership in this place. It's been a couple of years now as, as she leads you and pretty soon I get to ordain her a deacon and I'm really, really looking forward to that. So now for the commission. In the name of this diocese, I commission you for this year of service and pledge you our prayers, encouragement and support. May your service excite your heart and kindle in your mind the creativity to journey beyond the old limits of all that has become wearisome. May this service challenge you toward new frontiers that will emerge as you approach them, calling forth from you the full force and depth of your undiscovered gifts. May you have the grace of encouragement to awaken the hearts of others, building in them the confidence to follow the call of their gifts. May the Holy Spirit guide and strengthen you, that in this and in all things, you may do God's will in the service of the kingdom of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with favor upon Jess, Jonah, Lauren, Lucy, and Susanna, who have now reaffirmed their commitment to follow Christ and to serve in his name. Give them courage, patience, and vision. Help them serve as icons of the commitment to justice to which you call us. And let them lead and strengthen us all, our Christian vocation of witness to the world and of service to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Next, Bishop Fisher will be commissioning two members of our diocesan staff to serve as canons in this diocese. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, we are all baptized by the one spirit into one body and given gifts for a variety of ministries for the common good. Our purpose is to commission these persons in the name of God for the special ministry to which they are called. Bishop Fisher, I present Vicki Ix and Susan Olban to serve as canons of this diocese and fellow workers with you in the service of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are these persons you present 
prepared by a commitment to Christ as Lord, by regular attendance at worship, and by knowledge of their duties to exercise their ministry to the honor of God and the well-being of the church. I believe they are. Susan and Vicki, you've been called in a ministry to this diocese. Will you, as long as you're engaged in this work, perform it with diligence? I will. I will. Will you faithfully and reverently execute the duties of your ministry to the honor of God and the benefit of the people of God in the Diocese of Western Massachusetts? I will. I will. Will you work with me, your bishop, to help me hear the voice of the Spirit, always speaking the truth in love? I will. I will. Let us pray. Hear, good Lord, the voice of our prayers and confirm with your heavenly blessing these are servants whom we admit to the office of canon of this diocese that with sincere devotion of heart, mind, and body, they may offer good service to the glory of your name and to the benefit of your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of God and of this diocese, I admit you to the office of canon of the Diocese of Western Massachusetts. <laughs> and now I am happy to turn things over to Bishop Fisher for his annual address to convention. The mission continues. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. At our convention last year, which seems like a hundred years ago, I told a story about Michael Curry. We were in Providence for a large national gathering of deacons. Michael was giving the keynote address and he was preaching about St. Paul. He said, wherever St. Paul went, there was a revolution, a revolution. When he went to Corinth, there was a revolution. When he went to Philippi, there was a revolution. And then Michael started pointing out bishops in the crowd. He would say the bishop's name, and then he would say, what would it look like if there were a revolution in your diocese? And he named the diocese. He did this four times. Name of the bishop, and what it would look like if there was a revolution in your diocese. Then he calls me out. Doug, what would it look like? Oh, wait, there's already a revolution going on in Western Massachusetts. I was never so proud of our diocese. Now it's a year later. We find ourselves in the midst of a pandemic. Stress and anxiety are everywhere. Clergy and lay leaders feel it, as do healthcare workers, teachers, parents of school-aged children, owners of small businesses, the unemployed, and so many others. The pain I felt the most has been our inability to be with our loved ones when they were dying, and then having to severely limit the number of mourners who could attend the funeral. The Episcopal Church is far from perfect, but something we're really good at is pastoral care for the sick, in the beautiful prayer book, Burial, where we say that life is changed, not ended. And into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant. And there's so much more about the church that we miss, like seeing each other in person, Holy Communion, choirs. Add in an election that does not seem to end. In a deeply divided country, with two vastly different visions for our future. So what does a revolutionary diocese like Western Massachusetts do in this deeply challenging time? The revolution, the Jesus revolution, always begins with a radical commitment to faith. You know, I have three go-to prayers that I say these days. One comes from the prayer book, for use on All Saints Day. But I pray it every day. In the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses that we might run with endurance the race that is set before us. 
and together with them, receive the crown of glory that never fades away. It's a prayer that speaks to our time because we have a race now that we didn't pick, but it's the race that is set before us. And we don't run it alone. We're surrounded by the great cloud of witnesses that testify to the faith and to staying faithful. Who is in your cloud of witnesses? Bring them into your mind, into your soul. They are running this race with you. My other go-to prayer is from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He wrote this in 1968, but I think it's so perfect for 2020. God, we thank you for the inspiration of Jesus. Grant that we will love you with all our hearts, minds, and souls, and love our neighbor as ourselves. And we ask you, God, in these days of emotional tension, when the problems of the world are gigantic in extent and chaotic in detail, to be with us in our going out and our coming in, in our rising up and our lying down, in our moments of joy and sorrow. Dr. King preached over and over again about blessed assurance. Blessed assurance that God is always present. And he felt that presence most clearly and deeply in the most fearful and anxious moments of his life. And here's one more. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. We boldly proclaim we know God in the person of Jesus. Jesus who forgives, heals, feeds, lifts up, blesses, dies and rises. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. You are more resilient than you think because you are in the hands of a death-conquering God. Resurrection is not just for the end of life. Resurrection happens throughout life when we fall and we get up again. And the revolution will mean love of neighbor. You know, we did a survey of our churches asking how they are addressing the needs of their neighborhoods during the COVID-19 pandemic. What's gone on in these last six months? 39 of our 51 churches responded. And here's what love of neighbor looks like. 37 congregations have assisted their local food bank. 28,000 meals were prepared and served by our congregations. 22 congregations collaborated with mission partners by giving financial support totaling $138,000. Eight people were sheltered. 1,200 care packages for people experiencing homelessness. 105 backpacks were made for those leaving prison. Rector's discretionary funds accessed for the vulnerable, over $40,000. Over 1,600 masks were made and donated. Over 50,000 diapers and hygiene products given away. Hundreds of gift cards to local grocery stores given away. Several parish halls used for Wi-Fi by students who do not have that at home. Home repairs for five families. A farmer's market that served 6,400 customers. 50 blankets for children in neonatal care at Bay State. 200 school uniforms for children in Haiti. And that was all done by individual churches. On a diocesan level, through Human to Human, we are supporting lunches for veterans, walking together in Worcester, laundry love, and recovery programs. Living out Matthew 25 is part of the revolution in Western Massachusetts. The revolution demands racial justice and dismantling white supremacy. For several years now, we've had a very active Beloved Community Commission here. The tragic events of 2020 have shown a light on 400 years of racial injustice and made their work more important than ever. 
You know, more than 10 of our parishes have actively engaged in education programs such as Sacred Ground. We offered a webinar to our clergy and lay preachers about how to preach racial justice. Early on in the pandemic, Laura Everett, the executive director of the Mass Council of Churches, said that she feared at the end of this, only wealthy white churches would be left standing. She started a one church fund to help black urban churches from a variety of denominations. Our diocese donated $15,000. And there's so much more to do. Come Holy Spirit. Next week, I will ordain two transitional deacons. Both are people of color. And we've doubled down on our commitment to starting Latino faith communities, Episcopal Latino faith communities. There'll be more about this later in the convention. You know, if there's a patron saint for this time, someone we could take from the great cloud of witnesses to be with us in this time of shining a light on racial justice, one of them is a local saint, Jonathan Daniels, born and raised in Keene, New Hampshire. He went to the Virginia Military Institute and there heard a call to ordain ministry. He went to Episcopal Divinity School in the 1960s. Dr. King invited clergy from the North to come and work with him in the South. With other students, Daniels went to Alabama as a volunteer for a few days. At first, he was not particularly moved by the experience, but he missed the bus going back to Boston. It meant he had to stay another week, and in that week, he recognized the injustice of segregation and the Jim Crow laws. When we returned back to the seminary, he asked for a year off to work in Alabama. He did great work there, integrating the Episcopal Church in Selma. With others, he was arrested at a protest and jailed in Haynesville, Alabama. They were released after about a week and went to buy sodas at a local store. A man with a gun stopped them and aimed his gun at a black teenager named Ruby Sales. Jonathan realized he was going to shoot so he threw himself in front of her, taking a bullet that killed him. A martyr at 26. His writings include this. I began to know in my bones and sinews that I had been truly baptized into the Lord's death and resurrection. With them, the black men and the white men, with all of life, in him whose name is above all names, that all races and nations will shout, we are indelibly and unspeakably one. Indelibly and unspeakably one. Jonathan is now in the great cloud of witnesses. In 2020, we've witnessed unprecedented climate events, showing us that climate change is not in the future, it's now. Because of the prophetic voice of Margaret Bullock Jonas and of others, our diocese has long been a leader in creation care. That work is urgent. During the pandemic, more guns have been purchased than any six-month time frame since records have been kept. Bishops United Against Gun Violence continue to work diligently for gun safety, for gun safety through legislation and inviting gun manufacturers to become part of the solution. I've said it often in 2020, although most of our church buildings are closed, the mission of the church is wide open. I'm so inspired by our clergy and lay leaders who have adapted over and over again to provide pastoral care and worship. I get it. I get how hard this is. And there are more challenging months to come. Thank you for your resilience, your commitment to doing the most loving and safe thing. Whatever the tragic toll of this virus will ultimately be, the numbers will be less because of you. Learning the technology of getting together for worship on Zoom or YouTube Live or video streaming is another big challenge. Thank you for engaging that challenge. And to help you in that effort, we are starting a new financial initiative. From diocesan funds, we will reimburse any parish 
that upgrades their digital communication capacities up to $2,000. We want to encourage you in proclaiming the gospel with the best resources available. And the revolution is continuing in our diocese through the development of lay leaders. Jane Griesbach and Meredith Ward are teaching 40 people how to lead morning prayer. Rich Simpson and a team are training 12 new lay preachers with another class of 12 to follow. Jenny Gregg has led the Loving the Questions program for several years. It's an in-depth process to help participants discern how they are called to serve. Most years, there are five to 10 people in this program. In 2020, there are 26. And I'm grateful to Pam Mott, who's promoted the training of coaches in our diocese. We all need coaches to help us make decisions in this ever-changing environment. And now they're available as a holy resource. We live in hard times, but the church has gone through hard times before. The church was born in hard times. St. Paul describes it in his second letter to the church of Corinth. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. For it is God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may, may be clear that the extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. I'll end this convention address with one more saint and what the early church did in tough times. It's at the end of the fourth chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. A man named Joseph of Cyprus joined the apostles and the apostles renamed him. They gave him the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. You see, the apostles knew what they needed. They needed a son of encouragement. We live in such challenging times. What would happen if everyone here at this convention promises to be a son or daughter of encouragement in our churches, in our communities, in our families? It might be revolutionary. The mission continues. Surrounded by the great cloud of witnesses, we run with endurance the race that is set before us. And together with them, we see the crown of glory that never fades away. Amen. It is wonderful to have these things to celebrate and these signs of good things happening around our church. It's a wonderful reminder that we have much to be thankful for and much to be grateful for. So let us conclude our worship this morning with a prayer of thanksgiving, and I invite you to say with me, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
be with us all evermore.